Good evening, everyone. Just put a couple of words here together. Uh, here we go. Yeah. yeah. I shed a tear when I heard of a passing, not of sadness, but joy, because now I know we still going. She wanted to go. She was ready to go. And she knew it was good. For years I've been her, hearing her say that. And there's no doubt in my mind that she's with the Jesus that she loved. And her heart. Always speak about her heart. She wants to go. <laughs> the memories I have of her is one, when Mama used to drag me to play a practice. When I was a little fellow, she was right there. <laughs> so I've been hearing that sweet, beautiful voice ever since I was a little child, a little boy. Number two, Gordon was one of my best friends. Oh, yeah. Last but not least, she was one of my Sunday school teachers. Don't get me more stuff. Right over there, the second window, I remember where she taught me. And she taught me to say, O oh Lord, O oh God, how excellent is your name in our view. Well, I said, I told you about the heavens. Out of the amount of days and suffering, how do I have respect to both of them? Can I consider the work of their hands? The moon and the stars did thou have a day. What is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man? Made him a little lonely in the angels. I'm hungry. You know, man. That was made all things when his feet on sheep and not see him. He saw the key, he followed the key. The fish of his feet on the castle, the castle, the castle. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You know, I can't sing tonight. I can't do that. <laughs> I'd like to sing like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember one Sunday I preached down here. I know Dr. Cook, you all don't remember. And uh, I mean, insisted that she wanted to come to church. She was sitting in about the fourth bench back there. And when you look, she collapsed. I don't remember. And everybody rushing around. When she come out, she said, "One, did you see how much I've gone wrong?" And I never forget that Sunday morning. She said, "See how much I love you." Okay, Sister Gatto, are you able right now to do your?
like the grass on the he will pass by the way and be gone a lesson to learn we walk but once there's no return time is always moving on time is long man is long and for one for a song and the place in the sun a home of a home, where every day is lived in love, for rest when the journey is done. Let's in peace on you. Amen. She is gone. <clears throat> she is gone. You can shed tears that she is gone, or you can smile because she has lived. You can close your eyes and pray that she will come back, or you can open your eyes and see all that she has left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see her, or you can be full of the love that you share. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday, or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember her and only that she is gone, or you can cherish her memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back, or you can do what she would want, and that is sleep. Open your eyes, love, and go on. You're not doing it? Her class leader then will come and pay tribute. Miss me, but let me go. When I come to the end of the road and the sun has set for me, I want no rights in a gloom-filled room why cry for a soul set free? Miss me a little, but not too long, and not with your head bowed low. Remember the love that we once shared. Miss me, but let me go. For this is a journey we all must take, and each must go alone. It's all a part of the master's plan, a step on the road to home. All of Miriam Hodge's family, I give my sympathy to them. Please accept from my family and myself. Miriam, as I call her Mimi, she was class number five. She was the leader of class number five, and I was in her class. And after she stepped down, the automatically passed it on to me. She was there for a long time. As class leader and counselor, she provided many of us with inspiration and love. In our doubtful thoughts surface, she would always remind us of who we are now. Thanks to her for her guidance to the group members over time. And even though you will be dearly missed, Mimi, from class number five, in faith, we will endeavor to continue in the path that you taught us to do. The class has become bigger now, more members, and it's a bigger task for me because people don't come to church like before. But many always to me to persevere and just keep on praying for them and things will turn out right. And she is right. Thank you. Thank you very much, sister. Okay, now we'll sing number 380. In the Methodist hymn book, I will sing the wondrous story. 380. And the choir will sing after that. I was just waiting on some persons.
remain seated and sing.
God in love has promised grace for every trial, strength for every sorrow, help for every mile. And may he in sympathy and unfailing love impart help for each tomorrow and new courage to your heart. The choir will now bless us. she must be smiling that one life is but a stopping place a pause in what's to be a resting place along the road to sweet eternity we all have different journeys different paths along the way we all were meant to learn more things but never meant to stay our destination is a place for greater than we far greater than we know for some the journey is quicker for some, the journey is slow. And when the journey finally ends, we'll claim a great reward and find an everlasting peace together with the Lord. May you continue to rest in peace, our dear sister. 
the past students, the West End past students. Yeah. Okay, let's sing. We have heard a joyful sound. Jesus saves. Three, one, six. In the Methodist hymn book. Good evening, everyone, and a special good evening to the family of our dear sister Miriam. I get to know Miriam at a very important time in her life. <laughs> And that was the day that she was celebrating 100 years. I get to meet her, and I think we both fell in love with each other. And from uh, since that, in sharing uh, the sacrament with her, she would just gaze at me and I say, why are you looking at me like that? She would just look at me from, she start from below and right to the top. <laughs> and we would just smile at each other. And there was always that welcoming smile when Sister Dorothy and I would um, visit her. It was really a joy in terms of, she's singing, so I know what you're talking about when I hear that angelic voice that she had. She would really sing at that age. And it was just a joy, you know, being there, being in a company. And so on behalf of the Methodist Church in the Anguilla Circuit, we really has lost an icon within our church community. And Emmanuel has lost indeed a songbird. We give God thanks for her witness. And we pray that it will continue to linger with us. We'll have that great memory. I also want to extend sympathy on behalf of the family of the late sister Fortuna, Cynthia Lake, and her husband, deceased Leonard Lake. We know that... When Sinfi died, it was a shock. Sinfi would usually come here, sister, and to visit her friend. And I got to know Sinfi when I was in Guadeloupe, her daughter Lillian Lake, very much a part of the Guadeloupe Mission, the Methodist Church. 
And she always used to say to me, her mother is in Anguilla on vacation. And it's so sad that it's at the death that I knew that it was um, at, at Sister Miriam that she was coming because I would have had that conversation with her. And they really send their, their love and deepest sympathy because she journeyed. She was in her 90s and she journeyed to Saint Martin, Saint Martin, when um, Sister Fortuna died. And I know that they were very close and they sent me pictures to see yes that she was right there in terms of um sympathizing with the family and showing that she attended the funeral of her dear friend for the family we say may the peace of god be with you your mother lived a long and i believe fulfilled life our conversation was always about being ready are you ready for that day and that smile was there so God, the angels are there welcoming and singing, waiting for her, no doubt, to join the choir. May God grant you peace, and may her soul rest in perpetual peace. God bless. Oh, I said I wanted to, to, to <laughs> I wanted to, um, why are you laughing, Grace? I wanted to attempt, if you have your VIP 350, just a closer Work with them. I'm not a songster like her, but I thought that song was so fitting for the family as well. Just a closer walk with thee, granted Jesus is my plea, daily walking close to thee, let it be, let it be. You give me music? I don't know if I can sing with music though. Take that all then. Choir, you have to help me.
you. Thank you very much, Reverend. I'm putting Brother Ilri's children on notice. You have a song book now. Look for a song. Because all of you who are here will have to sing something when I call you, please. God's Garden. God looked around his garden and found an empty place. He then looked down upon the earth and saw her tired face. He put his arms around the sister Mary and lifted her to rest. With the help of his angels, they flew her to, heaven, to her heavenly place. God's garden must be beautiful. He always takes the best. He knew you were suffering. He knew you were in pain. He knew that you would never get well on earth again. He saw the road was getting rough and the hills too hard to climb. He closed your weary eyelids and whispered, peace be thine. It broke our hearts to lose you, but you didn't go alone. For part of us went with you the day God called you home. I think Marva, yeah. Marva's coming. Good night, everyone. Um, you see how life is? A young lady came up here a while ago, sang her heart out very nicely, and she gave sympathies, extended sympathies to the family on behalf of her family all about the globe. And I don't recall the one in Anguilla being represented. <laughs> Thank God I did it already in person. Oh my gosh. Thank you, mother. Um, Sympathies publicly extended to my family. Um, you know, we know what it is. And we've been with you. We've been with you in spirit. We've been with you prayerfully. We've been with you in any way we could be with you. However, we can't, you know, reverse the hands of time. Nor need we have to because the lady did want to go. We know that. Um, <laughs> she loved us, she loved us all, and she is now in the hands that created her. And we have to be extremely thankful for the hundred years because other people don't get that. And other people didn't get Auntie Mary. We had her, we know, okay? From, from the from time I came out my mother till now, okay? <laughs> And to mirror was one of the best things God has ever sent. And I'm thankful for her life, her witness, everything that she has done for me and been to me and the rest of the family. Um, so I would also like to say publicly to take care of a parent when they are ailing is, is it's unspeakable. And I would like to commend my cousins, every last one of them, their, their spouses, everything that everybody has been through in ensuring that Auntie Mary was the, kept as the queen that she is and that she was. They did everything. It was an amazing effort. And also Arlene. We, we can't leave her out. Arlene is family. We can't leave her out, you know? But... Publicly, I, I, I cannot do without it. You all did a tremendous job. You did a tremendous job, and you should be proud of yourselves for everything that you have done. Because the rest of us, we are proud of you. Okay? She's in a better place, and that's my piece. I end that there. Because, um, you know, I would get emotional and cry up here for her, too. Anyway, um... How we do it in this family, one person sent the next person to send the next person. So Bart's daughter, Sharon, sent me up here to represent Uncle George's son, Lyndon. So that's Lyndon Hodge in St. Kitts, straight out of St. Kitts. Um, he sent this tribute to be read, and so I'm just going to read it on his behalf to you all. It says her journey's just begun. Don't think of her as gone away. Her journey's just begun. Life holds so many facets. This earth is only one. 
Just think of her as resting from the sorrows and the tears in a place of warmth and comfort where there are no days and no years. Think how she must be wishing that we could know today how nothing but our sadness can really pass away. And think of her as living in the hearts of those she touched, for nothing loved is ever lost, and she was loved so much. And to Mary, rest in peace. Good evening, church. Mammy was my grandmother, uh, not by blood, but by deed. I'm sure there are a lot of people in this room that can relate to that, you know, as a mother figure in your life or as a grandmother figure in her life. I was blessed to, to know her for 30 years. And uh, Mammy had a, uh, a great way of teaching you lessons and you didn't even know you were being taught. And I spend a lot of time now as a grown man thinking about the lessons that she taught me in life, about loving the Lord, about generosity, about taking care of your family, about being responsible and respectful. And I just wanted to share a, a, a small story that I think sums that all up, what Mammy was in my life. Uh, me and my sister uh, came to Anguilla as probably 1992-1993 and we went over to meet Mammy for the first time and she had prepared as I'm sure most of you all know a grand a grand feast uh, she had you know tons of pots soups dessert everything and she always said you know sit down make yourself at home so me and my sister sat and she she said before you eat I want to tell you one thing you can have as much as you want you're welcome to whatever you want, just don't waste anything. And I, I listened really close, because I knew Mammy didn't play. But my sister, on the other hand, um, she was just happy all that food was there. So we go through our first bowl of soup. Um, I was full. But my sister says, Mammy, I want some more. And she's like, how much do you want? She said, another bowl. So Mammy brings another bowl out, and my sister starts to eat. About a quarter way through the bowl, my sister puts her spoon down, and she says, Mammy, I'm done. She said, no, you're not. <laughs> she made my sister sit there until the girl got sick. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing. My sister never wasted food again after that day. <laughs> so I said to say, as I go through life, I always remember a lot of the lessons that Mammy taught me, a lot of the lessons I didn't understand until I got older, to understand how difficult it is to have that much grace, to be such a, a warm, spiritual, loving person, to be able to impart knowledge and wisdom to you effortlessly and without judgment. May you rest in peace, Mammy. Anyone else? Elry's family. Children, grandchildren, in-laws, come please. Oh, Madge is coming, okay. Get everybody together, everybody coming. Get them all together. I would like to say of Mary that she was a strong woman a wonderful woman, a great person. She was a friend to my mother. And strange enough, though I'm a lot younger, she became my friend. And therefore, ever so often, we would visit. And it was always a good time to be with her. She would always ask about the family, how were they doing, and the conversations was always so cordial. I loved her as a woman of stature and she was 
a light in, in the, she was like one of the lights in her neighborhood. I could learn from her. She was a wonderful person. And it happened so that the children were all my friends, especially Shirley and I would have been in the same form. And we always had good relationships. I know that the family will miss their mother, but I see her as somebody who was ready to go. And I believe that she's with her Lord. God bless you, family, and comfort your hearts. I know it is still painful, although she lived that long, but she lived a virtuous life. God bless you all. In Jesus' name. Thank song we are about to sing is Blessed Assurance Jesus is Mine. Blessed Assurance Jesus is Mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchased of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Thank you very much. I'm sure your father is more pleased of you tonight than anything else. The sorrow of the faithful is not that, it, that of permanent loss, but the tender sense of sadness that comes in saying goodbye for now to someone we love. May today's sorrow give way to the peace and comfort of God's love. A nephew coming now. Condolence to all the family. And I want to say 
if you want to call it a plaque, Mira gave me this right after Uncle Red died. And I'm going to read it today. Um, the title of it is Hodge. You got it from your father. It was all he had to give. So it's yours to use and cherish for as long as you may live. If you lose the watch he give you, it can always be erased. But a black mark on your name, son, can never be erased. It was clean the day you took it. And I word a name to bear. When he go, when he got it from his father, there was no dishonor there. So make sure you got it wisely. After all is said and done, you will be glad the name is spotless when you give it to your son. I always thought, I said to Mary, I said, this is not for me. I think that this is for Van Dyke. But I guess you wanted me to have it. Publis, that kept you on the right track. Anyone else? Um, on behalf of the Connors family, I would like to, um, my condolence to the Hodges, to my dear cousins. Um, it's a pleasure to come all the way from New York. Um, I would not have missed it because she was a dear cousin. Um, I know coming to New um, Anguilla, we would always go by Cousin Mary, and she would just say, children, are you sitting on the bed? So don't we talk with Cousin Mary. If I come to church and she don't see me, she would hear the voice. She would say, that's Deli. <laughs> she didn't have to see me, but she just know the voice. Um, <clears throat> this was just something that I just look in the booklet, and I think that this would be um, something that would be really for all of us. The song on page eight, it says, precious Lord, take my hand, Lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storms, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired. Just 
the darkness appears and the night draws near and the day is past and gone at the river I stand guide my feet hold my hand take my hand precious Good night to everyone. I stand here in the strength and grace of God. As most of you know, just a few short months ago, I was plunged into deep, deep, deep grief and pain. The loss of my last son, just 31 years old. I give God thanks for his life. And tonight, I also give God thanks for Pan Mary, 100 years. And as I sat there and reflect on the good times that we share together, I thought it was only in order that I come up and say something. And first of all, let me offer my condolence to the family and the relatives and friends of Pan Mary. But she was someone that Teacher Pauline and myself would go to visit. We'll sit down and we'll have nice chats. We'll pray together. We'll sing together. And sometimes if I get a little tired, I'll lay down to the end of the bed and go sleep. <laughs> and you know, it was always, always a pleasure to go and visit Pan Mary. Because she was always in an upbeat mood. And uh, the last time we visited her, you know, I said, the big one is coming up. Say, Lord, girl, you think I'm going to make it? I think I'm going to, you know, she, as someone said, she always thinks she was going to go before this hundred years. I say, you ain't going away from here now. I say, look at this nice skin, not a wrinkle on this skin. And those pretty teeth. And, you know, we'll sit down there and we'll talk. And she was always someone who you could have felt inspired by. I know that she loved me. I loved her. She loved to hear me preach. And what she loved most of all was when I entertained. And there was always um, a monologue I did about cloning and marriage. And she would always remember that monologue. And it went something like this way. Um, I think somebody tell me that I was Everly get married again. <laughs> and when it passed up, we saw this wedding going up here. And it really realized it wasn't Everly. It was a cloned Everly. <laughs> and she never forgot that monologue. And you know, and I know that we have lost a great community leader, particularly here in West End, and we even got closer when she was a member of the Public Service Commission. And I used to take her, her documents and so sometimes as the secretary of that Public Service Commission. And she's done a lot for the community, she's done a lot for the church, she's done her part God has called her home, and she was a beautiful singer. You could hear that beautiful voice. And I think that you, her family, can feel satisfied that she has done her part, done her best in the master's vineyard. And you can be assured that she's resting safely and comfortably in the arms of Jesus. 
And even as I myself is finding strength and comfort in God's grace, I trust that you too will continue to find your strength and your comfort in the sustaining grace of God. And on behalf of my family and the teacher Pauline, who you know I can't move without her, um, I offer a sincere condolences to you. And may her soul continue to repose in perfect peace. Thank you. Thank you, Baba. Can choose a hymn from your booklet. It will be the little things that you will remember the quiet moments, the smiles, the laughter. And although it may not seem, and although it may seem hard right now, it will be the memories of these things that to help to push away the pain and bring the smiles back again. Page nine, does Jesus care? <clears throat> Does Jesus care when my heart is pained too deeply for mirth or song? As the burdens press and the cares distress and the way grows weary and long. We know the answer. Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my sin.
idea is rejuven rejuvenated. So he's going to come now. And after he sings, then Dr. Hodge will come to us. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is me representing Peggy, representing the Ishmael family stuff. As you can remember, Aunt Mary was the only relative who made it to 100 years in the family. And I'm cutting it short. She was a staunch Methodist when she could no longer get up to go to church. She would wish we were, we, she, as she would wish, we are sure it pained her. Aunt Mary was a virtuous woman. We do not remember hearing anything negative about her. Me, Peggy, was very fortunate to be there representing her uncle Ishmael's family. God, in his infinite wisdom, does things the way he sees fit. What were the chances that I would be there to see her draw her last breath? Niti used to hang out with Aunt Mary until she could no longer do it. I am glad God gave me the opportunity to be there on behalf of Niti and the family. To the children, please rest assured that your mom is resting in the arms of her maker and enjoying being with the relatives who has passed on, if that is possible. We just want you to know that she lived a life that showed that steadfast love of the Lord never ceases and his mercy never comes to an end. Great is thy faithfulness of God. His life her life mirrored mercy, love, favor, gentleness, and joy, as she allowed her Lord to use her to touch other lives for his glory. And Mary might be gone, but we, are for, but we are forever family. We will continue supporting each other. Love you all. Ishmael. It would have been a pity if she hadn't read it because Peggy was there when she drew her last.
this is not a duet. I'm here for support, but she's the elder one, so she will speak. <laughs> um, good night, everyone. This is something very difficult for me to do because Mammy was like another mother to me, to us. I mean, we grew up, my mother and she were friends, and then her children and my mother's children, we got so very close to each other. And we, it was Bundy and Garden, Grace, Nam and Shirley, Van Dyke and Carved, but you know. And we still are a close knit. We still keep close to each other. And whenever we go to visit Mammy, she asks about everybody. She asks about Tinnico. How is Tristan? How is everybody? Trasman and and she could remember every name. And, you know, she is, she's going to be missed. I really loved her. And one day, I visited her just after her birthday. And she said, Grace, I am giving you this book. I want you to read it. And when I opened it, I saw it was a prayer book for women but it was given to her for her 100th birthday. I said, but mommy, I can't take this from you because this is a gift to you for your birthday. She said, I read it already. I want you to have it and you will have that. That is from mommy to you. I want you to have it. I told Shirley about it. I said, Shirley, I told her I was gonna read it and I would bring it back. Shirley said, Grace, she gave it to you, so it is yours. I know every time we visited her, you know, we talk, we pray together, we, you know, and she was always singing. And when she was nearing her 100th birthday, you know, we would tell her the big one is coming up and whatever. And she would look at us and she would say, girl, I think I can make it. <laughs> I, I, ready, I ready to go down by heart, you know. I say, you will make it. If our God is on your side, you will make it. So, Mammy, on behalf of Gwyneth's children, we are here tonight. We say we love you, and we know that you are with our, our Savior. You are at rest. And I pray that you'll continue to rest in perpetual peace. And to the children, grandchildren, everybody, you all know where she is. You all know the kind of person she was and the life that she lived. So don't be afraid. Don't worry in vain because you know she's with her Savior. And we all have to continue to do what she did if we want to see her again. Thank you all. You wanted to play the piano. You wanted to be a nurse. You wanted to get married and have children, but most of all, you wanted to live a purposeful life. <laughs> Dear Mammy, when you were young, you had lots of dreams. You wanted to play the piano. You wanted to be a nurse. You wanted to get married and have children, but most of all, you wanted to live a purposeful life. You completed you completed Standard 7, the highest level of education on Anguilla at that time. Anything else beyond that was self-taught. I know because you were an avid reader. When I asked why you named me Rona, you said it was a name in a book that you were reading at the time. You did odd jobs prior to seeking employment off-island to continue to support your parents and the rest of the family. So the music education that you dreamed of did not materialize. The nursing ambition did not materialize either. You did get married, however, and then came the children. And so your unfulfilled dreams became the, your, dream, your dreams for your children. I knew early on that you did not think I was suited to play music, even though that was my dream. You thought that I would be well suited to be a secretary. So he sent me to typing class, and that lasted three weeks because I thought it was boring. 
Now I have come to regret that not, not learning that skill, as it would have come in handy in college and now at work. You were concerned that I wasn't suited to be a nurse either, but I surprised you at how well I did. You wanted Shirley to be a teacher, but I believe like Shirley, like me, Shirley heard how much you wanted to become a nurse, and she answered the call too. Norma was the only one with a voice, so when she wanted to learn to play the piano, you found a way to honor her wishes. You stopped trying with Gordon because he did not want to be the minister or doctor that you wanted him to be. Gordon wanted to be Gordon and had a very good time being Gordon. By the time Van Dyke came along, you gave up and left him out there to fend for himself. Your emphasis was to get your daughters educated because you did not want them to depend on any man. So you focused on our education, whether it was at primary school or Sunday school, and we thank you for that. In return, we had to be well behaved and learn our lessons because you did not only have eyes in the back of your head, you had the eyes of Teacher Avril, Teacher Glossy, and Teacher Merlin, and in high school, Teacher Irma. But there were ways to still outsmart you. There was a time when a certain gen gentleman wanted to take me out on a date, and you decided that I, I had to be chaperoned by my other sisters. Recalling how your parents sat between you and the guy who was interested in you, there was no dating at that time. I couldn't go alone. My sisters had to accompany me, and if the person did not arrive before 4 p.m., then we could not go, and we had to be home by 6 p.m. You kept looking at the clock, unaware that one of my siblings kept turning back the hands of the grandfather clock to make sure that it didn't pass 4 o'clock. The gentleman was late arriving, so we made sure that the hands of the clock did not pass 4 p.m. Sorry that you went to your grave not knowing the truth. <laughs> there are other instances that will remain top secret. You were very resourceful and did many things to help Daddy support your growing family. I long for the bread, buns, coconut tarts, and pudding that you made from your outdoor oven to sell. I am sure many of the older folk remember Miri bread. Although made to sell, you always set aside for the needy and the guys who brought the mail. Some of them still comment on how they looked forward to those treats and they remembered you for that. You love to be in your garden, the vegetables, provisions, and most of all your flower garden the morning glories, the hibiscus, and the roses. You enjoyed reading. You were tired of hearing about the basket of flowers that up until this day, I have not read it. So, when we saw that you were no longer reading the Anguilla newspaper that Rosalind brought to you every Saturday, we knew that you were seriously ill. You were compassionate. When, whenever one of your siblings away was ill, you would travel to visit them. You went to Curacao to Aunt Nezi, St. Kitts to Aunt Dori, and St. Croix to see Aunt Mathilde. And when your other siblings like Uncle Samuel and Uncle Ilry and other in-laws became ill, you were very attentive. You frequently visited the sick and shut in and spent quality time with them. You loved to travel. Remember when you and Mur Murtis went on a cruise? And when you returned, you were wearing pants? Well, that was the first and the last time that you wore pants because Daddy let you know there was only one man in this house. <laughs> then, of course, you were off to weddings. And you did not miss graduations either. When you couldn't attend, you wanted to see the pictures. You often talked about other places you visited that made an impression on you, Niagara Falls, the CN Tower in Toronto, and Monticello, the home of the third president of the United States, Thomas Jefferson. You loved to entertain. There were parties, and most of all, whenever family members and friends came from abroad, they were invited to the house, and only the best was served. You loved to sing, and we were entertained with your singing all day, even while you were ill. And could not express yourself verbally, 
you were able to belt out a hymn or two. We recall throughout the years that melodious voice practicing your part for concerts and cantatas. By the time the event came around, we already knew the entire thing, but we still had to sit through it. I can still hear the hallelujah chorus ringing in my head when I think about it. You had a way of making our friends your friends. Smart move, because you knew who your children were hanging out with. And so even today, you have young friends. You look forward to Rosalind visits on Saturdays. And when Gerald wasn't busy, um, he would drop by in, at any time. You always looked forward to Oscar greeting you and escorting you to your seat on Sunday mornings when you came to church. And at the end of the service, Tristan was there to escort you out to your transportation, whether it was Brenda, Marlene, or Boston, or whoever was available to drive you home. Oscar, Oscar also made a visit every Wednesday to see you, but when COVID came, there was a dramatic reduction in visitors and you felt so isolated that you turned to TV friends. And you have not so young friends, like Mrs. Sasso, Eudine Romney, Elfrida Hughes, and you miss some who have long passed, like Hubert Hughes, who came every Sunday evening to keep your company, and he wouldn't leave until I return from shopping or I wake him up from sleeping in the chair. You were all about family. Immediate family called you daily or weekly. Dorothy Smith in Canada, Marion Crook, Richardson in St. Martin, Loretta, now deceased, wanted to always make sure that you were okay. You lived to be over 100. You would say, I have been on this earth for a long time, although it was not until you were 99 and looked in the mirror that you thought you were old. Someone gave you a dress, and when someone asked you who the dress was belonging to, you said, not me, because that looks like a dress for an old woman. You were always particular about your dress. Your daughter brought hospital gowns to make it easier to dress you while you were ill. But Arlene, your caretaker, knew you so well that she said, Ma has to be in her clothes. She would not like to have people see her dress like this. So every day, she, she was, you were in a hospital bed, dressed up. People always asked you, what was your secret to a long life? You always tried to find an answer. Well, I can name a few. Honor your father and your mother. Eat well. You had a good foundation. You were brought up on fish and whatever else was grown in the ground. I always, I always heard you say that your body did not feel good if you did not eat greens, especially pigeon peas. And some doctor told you some time ago not to eat anything from a can, and you tried your best to do that. You also had good genes. Laughter, friends, family, and most of all, faith in God. You said that hard work does not kill anybody either. In addition to raising your children, you immerse yourself in the life and work of the church. You were a great fundraiser, whether it was the tea parties in the yard, socials and concerts, and the, don't forget those Sunday school picnics. God blessed you with a great voice and you used it to the glory of God. Your last words to me, just shy of four weeks before your passing. Soon you won't have me to worry about. I replied, who's worrying about you? I'm not. That is true, I'm not worried. I know that you prepared yourself. You prayed morning and night. You read your daily word and sang from your old hymn book. When you could no longer make it to church because you did not want to be seen in a wheelchair or because you thought it was too much trouble for me to take you, you became friends with Joel Osteen, T.D. T. D. Jakes, and others, whenever and whenever possible, watch the Methodist and Anglican services on Facebook. Most of all, you were a believer in Jesus, and you loved the Lord with all your heart and with all your might and all your soul, and you loved your neighbor as yourself. On your dying bed, I told you how much I looked forward to our Sunday visits, and that I will miss you, I will miss how you made me laugh till my belly hurt and tears came to my eyes. 
You loved a good joke, and you laughed so hard. I missed that already, and more. You always said that you had a wonderful life and told us don't wear black and do not cry for, for you when you're gone. You prepared yourself for your final journey. You tried to prepare us every day, but it is still hard for us to not see you laughing or hear you singing. We will always cherish those memories. You will rest in peace now unless you meet up with Daddy, Gordon, and all the other family and friends who have gone before you. Bye for now, until we meet again. That's it. Thank you. Oh. We're going to have Sister Marva to do the vote of thanks, and then we're going to sing our closing hymn. Whosoever heareth, three, one, seven. Sister Marvel. Um, I would just like to say that was a very lovely tribute, Dr. Hodge. That was beautiful, absolutely beautiful, and absolutely 100% true. 100% true. Um, so again, I was commissioned. I don't know how it happens, but it happens. I was commissioned by Dr. Hodge to give a vote of thanks, but. I have to finish the first job that I was already commissioned to do. Um, you know, when the instructions weren't given too clearly. Okay, I won't go any further than that. Um, the tribute that I delivered earlier was from Uncle George's sons, plural. He had two sons. He has two sons. Wayne Hodge in the States and Lyndon Hodge. So I do apologize, Wayne, cousin Wayne, knows that that was not intentional. Um, so Wayne and Lyndon sent their love to the rest of our family. Um, for me not to get in trouble again for the rest of the night, I shall not go into name calling and listing. The most I would do is say um, thank you, cousin Janice, because she was in front here all the time. Thank you, Cousin Janice, for the part that you have played this evening for the family and Aunt Mary. And we as a family, we, the family, them, whatever pronoun you want to fit in there, 
we would like to say thank you all for coming out tonight to share in um, our tradition of having a week for our beloved um, family member that passed on. And we would like to say we look forward to anyone who will continue to pay their respects to Auntie Mary tomorrow as we lay her to rest. Um, so I would just like to say thank you to everyone. Um, sorry about that. Um, so I would just like to say thank you all, everyone that played a role, whatever the role was tonight, and whatever the role will be tomorrow, God sparing all our lives. Thank you, thank you, thank you. On behalf of the family, please get home safely, and we look forward to sharing in the most heavenly singing to represent, you know, for Auntie Mary. She, she taught us very well. And we will sing very well tomorrow, God sparing, to make sure that she knows and she hears, if she can hear, every note, clearly, accurately, everything, okay? Thank you all, thank you all, and have a blessed evening. That vote of thanks need a vote of thanks. So thank you to Cousin Marvel. Now, chasing, most of us have this. We're gonna sing, we are marching to Zion, and we can't march if you're sitting down. No, well, there's an excuse, there's a thing for those who really can't stand, okay? But once you're able, please stand, let us march to Zion. It's number 15, at the bottom of page 15. Come ye that love the Lord, and let your joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord, and thus surround the throne. Page 15, at the bottom of page 15, we are marching to Zion.
not take away. Reverend, please dismiss us. Now the ladies, MCCA women, you're required to wear your green vest tomorrow, God's will. Tribute start at two, yes. and the service starts exactly at three. God bless you, and as Marva said, get home safely. <laughs>